The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 128. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of successful women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Subscribe to our newsletter by visiting thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady who is, I think, in California, if I'm mistaken, yep. I, I apologize. Oh, okay, sweet. So she's from California. She is a online business mentor, health and wellness coach, and she is also the founder of Project Hashtag Made for More. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Kelsey Hayashi. Kelsey, how are you doing today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Definitely. Um, And I'm doing great. Thank you so much, Sheena, for having me on your podcast. I am born and raised in California, spent most of my life in San Diego, so I'm a SoCal girl. And I figured that in order to kind of say where I got to where I am today, I'll just start with a little um, story about where I came from, if that's okay with you. Yeah, not a problem. Awesome. So I actually grew up with a very severe condition of eczema which is a really common skin condition, except that for me, it covered about 80% of my body head to toe. Um, And so I was a really sick kid. And um, I didn't look like most other kids because my entire body was covered in scars and rashes. And I spent a lot of time in and out of hospitals as a kid with my parents, you know, trying to find a way to strategize with doctors just to get it under control to a point where it was manageable. And it even got to the point where the doctors asked me that they wanted to burn off a layer of skin in a light box so that they could start over. So it was definitely something that impacted me and my confidence early, early as a child. And because of it, I didn't really fit in well with a lot of people growing up. And so Sheena, when you asked me to speak on this podcast, it took me such a long time to figure out what it was that I wanted to say, because, you know, I have to admit that Confidence is something that I struggled with for most of my life, and it was definitely not something that came easy to me. So I'm honored to be here today, and I'm super excited to speak on it. But anyway, so when I was in high school, the medications that they had me on for my skin, they actually left me with actually, like hardly any eyebrows, um, which as you can imagine in high school is a total nightmare. But it taught me a lot about who I am as a person and what's important to me in this life. And dealing with that, condition and not, and, you know, being socially rejected by a lot of people, I turn to food for comfort, you know, as many of us do for anything, you know, emotional stress, we turn to something. And so food, that was it for me. And as a result, I was overweight for most of my life. But in 2012, I reached my absolute heaviest at about 190 pounds. And I was just not comfortable in my own skin. I wasn't happy with the person that I saw in the mirror. And I can very, very vividly remember sitting in my car one day and I strapped my seatbelt in, you know, clicked it. And I could just feel that seatbelt pulling against my stomach. And I just wanted to cry. You know, I just wasn't happy and I felt terrible about myself. But it wasn't until about 2012 that I got my wake up call. Because my best friend had invited me to a group kickboxing class, you know, just something fun to do. And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. No problem. I'll go. Shoot. No big deal. And I went to the class and they started the workout. And less than 10 minutes in, I was starting to see black spots. I couldn't catch my breath. I was so embarrassed and so feeling sick, like I was going to throw up or something, I kind of stumbled out of the room just to collapse on the floor outside of the outside of the class. And I was embarrassed. I didn't know it had gotten that bad. And I just remember waking up that next day, vowing to myself that I was either going to die trying or I was going to fix it. And so to make a really long story short, in 2015, so the beginning of last year, about a year ago, I passed my 50 pound weight loss mark and I decided that it was time for me to give back to the world. And that's really how my 21 day program project hashtag made for more was born. When I started my weight loss journey, I didn't have anyone around who had already had a transformation or who had any tips or tricks on how to make you know, health and fitness, a lifestyle that you actually are okay living with. (laughs) And so I struggled for a really long time trying to figure it out on my own. And that's why it was really important to me to create a space 
for women to get support and advice on their journey. And so Project Made for More is really a celebration of, of the journey and because I know how hard it is to go at a health and fitness journey on your own alone, and I know that it's a million times easier to gain momentum and stick with something when you do it as part of a team, that's why I created Project Made for More. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And that's quite a story, um, you know, you've shared from, you know, having extre- extreme eczema to, to, you know, the weight loss journey. And it, it's it's true. Having a group is so much easier than to be doing it alone. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, what's your cultural background? So I am half Chinese and I'm half Japanese. So my mom's Chinese, my dad's Japanese, but we're like American Chinese Japanese because both my parents were also born here in the United States. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I absolutely love this one. So I'm so glad that you asked. And it's from The Secret. I'm not sure which person spoke it since there's so many people that speak in there, but it goes, when the voice and the vision on the inside become more profound and more clear and loud than the opinions on the outside. You have mastered your life. And I think that this really speaks to self-confidence in that you have to know who you are and not be swayed necessarily in such a high degree by the things around you when you achieve it. So I just think that this perfectly speaks to that. I love it. I think that's the first time I've ever heard that quote. And I've read The Secret, so I must have missed that. So thanks for sharing it. <laughs> but in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? So for me, it's two-part. And gosh, I thought about this one for so long. But to me, self-confidence really means, one, having faith in your own ability to create a positive future or positive outcome in your life. And then secondly, being able to live in a mindset of trust in yourself your abilities, and your worth. And I kind of just want to emphasize that part of being able to live in that mindset because it's okay to visit other things. Um, I think that when you're self-confident, some people think, oh my gosh, that person is so confident. They must never have doubt. They must never have fear. And I don't think that that's self-confidence. I think what self-confidence truly is, is being able to recognize, okay, I'm feeling fearful or I'm feeling doubtful in this moment, but I'm not going to live here. I'm going to move on and I'm going to trust in what I am capable of and my own worth. And I'm going to be positive about it. And I think that that's really the key here is while you may experience the entire variety of all those feelings that you choose to live in a positive way, if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. I mean, we have to be aware of these things so that we can change them, right? Whether it's fear, whether it's anger, whether it's hate, you know, we have to become aware of it and then once we're aware, it's up to us to either keep on going or or change our mindset, right? So I love the definition that you had. And what was your life like before you discovered self-confidence? Oh, my gosh. Well, to be honest, I felt really, really ugly. You know, to not look like everybody else was really tough. And I was surrounded by you know, everyone that fit the perfect BMI, you know, all my friends were fit and they looked good and they didn't have skin problems. Um, So I felt really ugly in comparison to them. And it was a big comparison game. And I didn't see my own self-worth or what I had to offer the world because I didn't feel significant. I didn't feel special or qualified to do anything. And because of it, I always took the safe route. I didn't go anywhere really far for college. I didn't, you know, didn't go out and take any big risks or anything like that. And I really struggled with knowing who I was as an individual and being secure enough in myself to make bold decisions in my life, which one of the other things I know you talk a lot about, Sheena, is Asian women, especially being raised in cultures where the focus is on the community versus the individual. And so that was a big thing for me growing up before I discovered, you know, self-confidence and really finding myself. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, for me, like Asian women, we're always, it's always a big compare game, right? Whether it's from our parents or or just our community, it's like, oh, so-and-so did this. Why aren't you like that person? And that really can hurt us, right? Because then we're always comparing ourselves to other people when we don't even know what the story is. And we have, you know, our own talents and skills that we can give back to the world. So, you know, it's insane what these little, things can really affect us in a big way, right? And, and, you know, what was that aha moment in your life when you realized that, you know, you are, you are worthy of, you know, doing the things that you want, you know, you didn't have to follow the crowd, that you are beautiful? For me, it was a combination of things. So losing the 50 pounds, of course, that had a lot to do with my self-confidence because I started to feel good about myself and to feel healthy. But another big part of that was 
moving away from my hometown, San Diego, across the country to Virginia to be with my boyfriend, who's a pilot. And what I didn't expect in that experience was that I would feel so alone, which of course, it's kind of silly because pilots are gone a lot. But to remove myself from my community and my support system and what I've known pretty much my entire life and putting myself in that situation, I became extremely lonely. And I got to this point in my life that I felt like pushed up against a wall. And I had this moment where I realized I didn't know who I was without my family and friends. Like I said, being raised in a big in a, with an emphasis on community, not on the individual, um, both in my family and among my friends. So taking me out of that environment was a really weird experience for me. But because of it, it forced me to face who I was and what I really wanted in this life. And that's when I found, you know, that I wanted to create communities for other people that may, may not have what I had back home. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And, you know, it's funny when, you know, you go out there on your own and it's, it's a little scary, right? Cause you're, you're, you're not used to like the unknown, but then it's also a beautiful thing because then you can expect so many things like what you did, right? You weren't so sure, you know, your family wasn't there. It was just you, but then you were able to find something amazing. You know, after that realization, what's your life like now? Oh man, it's, it's an ever growing state of mind for me. I've realized it's a fluid thing. It's something I discover, something new every single day. But the biggest thing for me is that I'm finally happy with myself. Like I'm much, much more at peace in my life. And I find that even if life is chaotic on the outside, I'm at peace and in a place to deal with it on the inside because I'm secure in myself. And now when I look at myself in the mirror, I'm proud of that woman. And it's an amazing feeling. Awesome. And thanks for sharing that. And I love how you said, you know, you're happy with yourself because there's a lot of women out there who still feel like they're not happy and like they have to look for things to be happy when it's really just inside themselves and just doing that inner work. Then they can start feeling happy and be at peace with themselves. So, you know, Kelsey, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be also in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Oh, wow. That's tough. I have a bunch, but if I had to pick one, I would say figure out who you are and then fall deeply and madly in love with yourself. Like to the point that you like the energy that you would give to loving someone else. I think that our women need to give that energy into learning how amazing they are um, and how much how capable they are and how much of an impact they can have on this world. I just think it's so important to know that about yourself, because when you do, I think that's when you find that inner peace and when you find that confidence to feel good about your decisions and to feel good about what you're doing in this life. I love it. I love that advice. Fall in love with yourself because there's too many people out there who, who aren't, you know, who don't want to fall in love with themselves. They're always self-sabotaging or, you know, putting themselves down. So, you know, I think this is probably one of the best, you know, advice I, I I've heard, you know, just fall in love with yourself. It's, it's, it's something that we have to do, especially with self-confidence has to start with ourselves so that we can attract the right things into our life. So thanks for sharing that. And Kelsey, if our listeners want to get to know a little bit more about you and your projects, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Definitely. I'm all over the internet. So if you Google me, you'll find my Facebook, uh, my like page, and my website. But the easiest ones to, to connect with me would probably be facebook.com forward slash love Kelsey, like the way I would sign a letter. So L-O-V-E-K-E-L-S-I. Uh, facebook.com slash love Kelsey or the easier one to remember is my website www.projectmadeformore.com thank you for sharing that and to our listeners you can also head on over to the tau of and search for Kelsey's name her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about and I just really want to thank Kelsey for sharing her story and journey with us so thank you so much Thank you. It was absolute pleasure. I feel so honored to be able to be here today. It's an honor to have you on. So to our listeners, be on the lookout for another amazing episode of another new woman's journey to self-confidence. And we'll catch you later. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Check out our resources to help you jumpstart your inner journey to self-confidence by visiting the Tao of